And the Diamondbacks have won three in a row. An exciting night at the ballpark last night. Tonight they are filing in on Patrick Corbin bobblehead night with Patrick handing them out. The All-Star will join us in the booth as part of the broadcast crew as the D-backs look to extend their winning streak here at Chase Field. Good evening from Chase Field and welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthium, Bob Brenly along the way. This is the Diamondbacks and the Philadelphia Phillies, the second of a three-game weekend set on... Patrick Corbin bobblehead day. This is a hot item right here. The first 20,000 fans through the gates got their Patrick Corbin bobblehead. And it continues a pitching theme here. In Chicago, we saw Wade Miley and Mike Bolsinger. Last night here, Josh Colmenter. Bob, the pitching as of late has been much improved. Much improved over the last nine games. 80 innings pitched. The ERA standing at 371. Makes such a difference to only having to get two or three innings out of your bullpen rather than five or six. And also for the offense, they have an opportunity to settle into the rhythm of the game themselves without being behind four or five nothing early. Well, we hear so often about pitching and defense. The Diamondbacks certainly had both last night in winning their third straight. The key defensively was those two big plays in the eighth inning. No question about it. With the runner at first base, Marlon Bird was uh, looking like an extra base hit down in the left field corner, but Tony Campana used his speed to cut it off, held the runners in place. A couple of ground balls to first base and Brad Ziegler was out of the inning. Tremendous defensive play by Campana and as usual a couple good plays by Goldie at first. Well we had more than 28,000 zombies here last night. 20,000 Patrick Corbin bobbleheads here today. When we come back, A.J. Pollock last night. A late home run provided some valuable insurance. First pitch coming up at the Diamondbacks and the Phillies on Fox Sports Arizona.
and buy Jack in the Box. And to Jack in the Box and try the new Jack's Blazing Chicken Sandwich. It's Jack's hottest sandwich yet. And buy Chaz Roberts Air Conditioning and Plumbing. Choose Chaz. City Brunson with you here at Chase Field as the Diamondbacks chase a fourth straight win. Of course, that third win in a row came in part to the bat of A.J. Pollock. He came through with his second home run of the season last night. It was a huge blast, an insurance run. I asked him about that neck because it was his first game back since suffering the injury. He said he feels fine. The batting average is on the rise as well. It's up to 250 and climbing. He hopes to provide some run support for Bronson Arroyo. Arroyo feels like the back is finally getting better. He feels better than he has in a while, and he is ready to nail down his first win here career at Chase Field. We've got first pitches coming up next. It will be Bronson Arroyo versus Cliff Lee as game two of this three game set against the Phillies continues. Settle in. Get the popcorn ready. We've got the Diamondbacks chasing win number four in a row next. In their Saturday blacks with the outfield panels closed, the roof open on a cool and breezy night in downtown Phoenix as the Diamondbacks look to make it two in a row over the Phillies in this three-game series and four in a row overall looking to keep this mojo going. Good pitching matchup for you. A pair of veterans, the right-hander Bronson Arroyo, the left-hander Cliff Lee, and for the Phillies, this is the lineup that will face Bronson Arroyo here tonight. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of the same guys we saw in the ball game last night. Ben Revere at the top playing center field. Jimmy Rollins at shortstop. Chase Utley at second base. Ryan Howard at first base. Marlon Bird, good career numbers against Bronson Arroyo. Keep an eye on him. Dominic Brown in left. Carlos Ruiz once again behind the plate. Freddie Galvez takes over at third base, batting eighth tonight. And Cliff Lee, the left-hander on the mound for the Phillies. They will face the Diamondback right-hander, the veteran, Bronson Arroyo. He is our Arizona Ford starting pitcher. And for a scouting report, here is Philadelphia's Chase Utley. You know he's going to throw the kitchen sink at you. Uh, you try to, try to be patient, try to get a ball in the zone that you can do something with. Uh, but he's a crafty righty. He's been around for a long time. He makes it tough on guys. A rare crafty righty. I thought all crafty guys were lefties. <laughs> 
Uh, Bronson Royo is uh, crafty by necessity. Doesn't have the kind of fastball he can just wear back and challenge hitters in the strike zone. Got a nibble at the corners, mix in breaking pitches. We talked about his alternate arm angles. He'll throw straight over the top, three quarters, low three quarters, sidearm, whatever the situation calls for. Looking to improve upon those numbers. And as Cindy Brunson mentioned at the top of the broadcast, he has been fighting that bad back all season long, but said this week he's just started to feel better, a little more like himself during the last few days, and now he just has to go out on the mound and get guys out, and he'll start with Ben Revere. There's a strike underway at Chase Field. Revere, 298 on the year, that 314 on base percentage, not quite as high as you'd hope from a leadoff hitter. Arroyo jumps ahead 0-2. But Revere's had a hot bat lately, a pair of singles last night. He also stole a base and scored a run. And he has got 10 hits in his last five games. A three-pitch strikeout for Bronson Arroyo. Open things up. Diamondbacks defense brought to us by Mid-First Bank. Hasn't needed any of them except for Miguel Montero up to this point. But if he does, it'll be Cody Ross in left, A.J. Pollock in center, Gerardo Parra in right field, a gold glove winner last year. Martin Prado and Chris Owings on the left side of the infield tonight. Aaron Hill and Paul Goldschmidt with a gold glove of his own last season on the right side of the infield. Montero behind the plate for right-hander Bronson Arroyo. Jimmy Rollins first pitch swing and Paul Goldschmidt falls on it and Arroyo covers. There's the gold glover at first, two down. When Bronson Arroyo is on the mound, you will see more balls pull, whether it's a left-hander pulling the ball to the right side or a right-hander pulling the ball to the left side just because he doesn't overpower opposing hitters. Paul Goldschmidt with a nice diving stop Chase. to keep that one out of the right field corner. Well, two outs on four pitches for Arroyo, and now here's the man who gave us the scouting report. It's Chase Utley, the second baseman. You can see Bronson's hair in Jersey blowing in the wind. It's a breezy in downtown Phoenix today. There's a the ball 1 0. Really windy down on the field. Chase Utley, fourth in the league in hitting at 358 and getting on base more than 40% of the time. The OPS over 1,000. There's a the strike 1 and 1. 20 previous at bats for. Chase Utley against Bronson Arroyo. Six hits. That's a 300 average. A couple of homers. A couple of walks. Has struck out two times. And on a cool night in the Valley, Arroyo going without the undershirt. So we'll no see, uh, we will not see any Oliver Perez split sleeve scenarios like we saw last night. Yeah, but that hair could be distracting to a hitter. I would think. He needs to go get a haircut. Can he play for you with hair like that? Oh, sure. As long as he can pitch. This is there. It's two and two. Talked about that before, how my attitude about things like that changed. Well, you've mellowed over the years. Well, yeah. I mean, you get people out, you get hits, you catch the ball, you throw the ball, you do what you're supposed to do. I don't care if you have a ponytail. Well, you never were known for your rules. Show up one time and be ready to play. 2-2. Two, two. Aaron Hill, it's under the glove and into center. Utley's aboard. Just a little too far out of reach for Aaron at second, and the Phillies have a two-out base runner. Well, I talked First about how you anticipate six. guys Ryan pulling the Howard. ball against Bronson Arroyo. With that in mind, Aaron Hill was maybe a step or two more toward the hole between first and second and just couldn't recover quickly enough to get to that one. And the shift is back on for Ryan Howard. We saw this all last night. Aaron Hill in very shallow, almost to midway back in right field. Chris Owings, the shortstop, playing where the second baseman might normally play. And Martin Prado, the third baseman, playing shortstop. All by his lonesome on the left-hand side of the infield. Howard one for four with a single last night. There's some of that kitchen sink that Utley was talking about. 72 miles an hour. That's not really even an off-speed pitch. That's just kind of a little cutter, batting practice fastball, if you will. Just throw it up there and let Ryan Howard get way out in front of it. 
back with a nasty sinker at 86. That's about top end for Bronson Arroyo. Occasionally he'll get up to 87, 88 on a good day with the wind at his back, but uh, 85, 86 is right about where he usually pitches with that two-seamer. And the wind literally at his back in that shot. They go away on 0 and 2, but Howard won't chase. Four for 20 career with a home run. Arroyo has seen plenty of the Phillies over his day. In his last three starts against Philadelphia, 3 and 0 with a 1-5-2 ERA. And a roller to well second base, but Owings is there with the shift on, so it's a 6-3 ground out. And that's the inning. Arroyo strands the two-out single just underway on Patrick Corbin bobblehead night at Chase Field. And to the side for will lead it all for the Diamondbacks against our Arizona Ford starting pitcher. It is Cliff Lee. And for a scouting report, here is the D-backs, Aaron Hill. He's got everything. He throws, you know, throws a lot of strikes, obviously, but, uh, you know, he, he pitches on both sides of the plate effectively with his cutter, changeup. He's got a great curveball. Um, so, obviously, for us, it's just uh, with our approach, and uh, I was sticking with it. We have it. The veteran Cliff Lee, 35 years old. A.J. Pollock steps in to lead it off against the left-hander. And A.J., who homered last night in his last at-bat, picks up where he left off. One swing, one hit for the D-backs. And this is the lineup for Kirk Gibson. Well, we know A.J. Pollock is at the top of the lineup. Very aggressive against the strike-throwing Cliff Lee. Martin Prado in the two spot. Paul Goldschmidt batting third. Miguel Montero once again in the cleanup spot. Aaron Hill, last three games on fire. Six for 12 with four extra base hits. Cody Ross in left field tonight. Gerardo Parra in right field. Chris Owings at shortstop. And right-hander Bronson Arroyo on the mound. So AJ now three hits in his last five at bats, and Martin Prado steps in at 2:45 on the year. This has been a very strange season so far for Cliff Lee. He has shown, as he always does, remarkable command. 35 innings pitched, only two walks, while striking out 38. But at the same time, as we just saw, he has been very hittable. In fact, no pitcher in all of baseball has given up more hits this season than Cliff Lee. Well, that will occasionally happen to a strike thrower, a guy who was always... They got Pollock hung up. He might beat it. But, uh, yeah, he's in there at second as Rollins drops the ball. Close play. Chris Conroy, the second base umpire, no indication there, and A.J. is aboard at second. 
Quickly's not known for having a great pickoff move. That was just a quick step to first base and caught A.J. going the wrong way. I'm not sure what happened with that throw, whether it hit A.J. or Jimmy Rollins just didn't make the catch. Just hit him on a bad spot of the leather right there. A.J. into second base. And now Lee is behind on Prado. 3-0. They credit A.J. with his first stolen base of the year. He's on second with a 3-0 count to Prado. Well, they just changed that now. That is an error on the shortstop, Rollins. Technically there, Pollock caught stealing. So instead of a stolen base, change it to caught stealing and an error on the shortstop. Three balls and a strike. Cliff Lee was outstanding in his previous start. That was Monday at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. Eight innings of four hit ball without a walk, and he struck out 10. And that was after he struck out 13 two starts ago against Atlanta. His numbers for Monday in Los Angeles. No walks, 10 Ks, only four hits. He has never had three consecutive games of double-digit strikeouts. That one has bounced to second to Utley. Pollock the third, one away. Philadelphia, I'm sorry, Bob. Philadelphia defense brought to you by Mint First Bank. Here's how Ryan Sandberg will line him up tonight. Dominic Brown in left, Ben Revere in center. Marlon Bird over in right field. It'll be Freddie Galvis at third base. Four-time gold glove winner Jimmy Rollins with an error already tonight at shortstop. Chase Utley at second base. Big Ryan Howard over at first. Chooch Ruiz behind the plate for left-hander Cliff Lee. Nice at bat by Martin Prado. Moving that ball to the right side of the field. Getting Pollock to third base, an opportunity for Goldie here to drive in a run. With a fly ball to medium depth outfield. Keep that pressure on. Put the first number up there. Goldie drives it to right. Bird has it, and Pollock will tag. Here's the throw. It's up the line, and the Diamondbacks have a one nothing lead. RBI number 16 for Paul Goldschmidt. Get him on, get him over, and get him in. Well, notice the aggressive nature of the bats already. Only five hitters in. Two guys have seen one, or three hitters in, rather. Two guys have only seen one pitch. e bats are already on the board. When you face a guy who is notorious for throwing strikes, getting ahead in the count, sometimes the best way to combat that is to be aggressive. Hit that first strike. He is always in or around the strike zone. So you're going to get something to hit. Strike one to Miguel Montero with 269. Miggy on base twice last night, a pair of walks. He scored a run, but saw his six-game hit streak get snapped. He has it safely now in 11 of his last 14 games. Boy, the numbers for Lee, just amazing. You go back to September of last year, 10 starts. 92 strikeouts against only three walks. He throws strikes, man. 30 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio. Is that good? That's pretty good. That one is in the glove of Galvis at third, but he'll have no play in Montero's aboard. Freddy Galvis getting the start at third. We saw Cody Ashey last night. And the Diamondbacks have their second hit in the inning against the Flames. Ball off the bat of the left-hander. Sometimes we'll have some unusual English when he hits it to the left side of the field. Galvis probably still had time to make the play if he recovered quickly enough, but just kind of swatted at the ball. And he was able to reach with an infield single. And here's the hitting hero from last night. It's Aaron Hill. 243 on the year and two homers. Aaron last night a two-run homer in the fourth, RBI double in the fifth, and likely would have actually scored two had it not hopped into the seats in left center. Getting that gamer ready. There's the strike, one and two. 
We've seen different guys use different things. We've seen that stick that guys rub on their bats uh, with some adhesive on it. We've seen pine tar and rosin, some kind of uh, adhesive tape there on the handle of Cliff Pennington's bat. Whatever makes you feel good. <laughs> it's intricate work. Two balls and two strikes. Little looper in the center, and it drops in for a base hit. Aaron Hill coming around. Two on and two out with a run already in. So here's Cody Ross. These two have seen each other before. In fact, Cody, 2003 with the Detroit Tigers, his first major league home run coming against then Cleveland pitcher Cliff Lee. Opposite field home run for Cody Ross. And so here's Cody off to a one for 22 start to the season. Coming off that brutal hip injury from last year. That is in the center. Here comes Montero. He will score. And it's 2 nothing. D-backs. Cody's first hit finally came Wednesday in the 100th anniversary game at Wrigley Field. That was an RBI single, and hit number two drives in a run as well. The hitters and hitting coaches will call this ambushing an opposing pitcher, just jumping on that first strike from Cliff Lee in this ball game tonight. Good results here in the first inning. Already four base hits, two runs on the board. Welcome back, Cody Ross. So two on, two out. Now two runs in. And here is Gerardo Park. Parra has it in four straight. Last night, a single, a stolen base. He scored a run. J. Pollock got it started. Swung at the first pitch of the night from Cliff Lee. Had a single, came in and scored. Here's a strike, two and one. And today against Cliff Lee, a look at Parra versus left hand pitching, something we've talked about him needing to improve on this year. Those are the numbers. Hit 198 against lefties last year. A roller to short Rollins. He'll go to first, and that's the inning. The Diamondbacks strand two, but they get to four singles against Cliff Lee. Throw one. Arizona leads it 2 nothing.
Diamondbacks. 2-0 on Patrick Corbin bobblehead night. Patrick, by the way, will join us in the booth here in the third inning. Bob Brenly, your Valley Honda dealers. Keys to the game. Yeah, you heard Chase Utley say that uh, Bronson Arroyo will throw the kitchen sink. Well, let's hope the kitchen sink stays in the kitchen tonight. Bronson Arroyo has given up some long balls this year already. And on April 9th, 1865, Robert E. Lee, no relation to the best of my knowledge, to Cliff Lee, surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse. So hopefully this will be the Appomattox here tonight, and we will play the role of uh, Ulysses S. Grant. Marlon Bird lifts that high in the air to deep center. It backs up Pollard to the track. And he's got it one away. Well, you got to watch out with Donald Cliff Lee from Brown. Benton, Arkansas. He might not like that, the Arkansas Razorback. Yeah. Well, we're not here to please Cliff Lee. <laughs> Dominic Brown. Another strike one from Arroyo. Brown a pair of hits last night. He's hit in five of his last six. And Bronson said he really feels for the first time this year like himself off the long back injury that's plagued him now for well really since the very beginning of spring training. And by the way he pitched in the first inning you have to believe him. 13 pitches in that first 10 were strikes. He had three swings and misses. He had very few his last time out So that was very encouraging But he's behind three and one on Dominic Brown Sky to shallow left Owens calling for it Two down when the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. The day after every D-backs win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code D-backs50 at PapaJohns.com. Great night to be at the ballpark. Good crowd. Patrick Cor Corbin bobbleheads being handed out. And a 2-0 lead over the Phillies with two outs in the second. Here's the catcher, Carlos Ruiz. New generation of D-backs fans on their way. Strike one. Boy, that was just textbook Bronson Arroyo. A 3-1 pitch to a dangerous hitter in Dominic Brown. He threw a 71-mile-an-hour fastball. Just, once again, that batting practice fastball. Take advantage of the hitter's aggressiveness. He's expecting something in the mid-80s. Throw it up there about 10 miles per hour slow. Brown just could not lay off. Bringing the heat at 87. Yeah, that one is dropped into right for a base hit. So the Phillies have had a two out single in back to back innings. And that brings up Freddie Galvis. Third baseman, number 13, Freddie Galvis. That guy's Galvis. a tough out, Carlos Ruiz. Well, if Bronson Roy is a crafty righty, Carlos Ruiz is a crafty right-handed hitter. You know, he, <laughs> he knows what opposing pitchers are going to try to do. He's seen plenty of Bronson Arroyo in his career. Just stays on it, flips it into right field for a base hit. Well, Freddie Galvis won for 25 to open the year. And with that number, he's actually been playing his way into the starting lineup. He started three of the four games the Phillies just played at Dodger Stadium. And that's mostly because Cody Ashey, who started here last night, has really struggled offensively. So Ryan Sandberg figures, well, if neither guy is going to hit, might as well go with a better defender, and that's Galvis. 2 and 0. Third base has been a bit of a black hole offensively for the Phillies. Sandberg has been willing to stay patient with both these two guys until one of them steps forward and takes control of the job. Three and one now. With the left-hander Cliff Lee on the mound tonight. Uh, 
throwing that cutter into the right. He's throwing a lot of straight change ups. Uh, figure to get a lot of action on the left side of the infield with all the right handed bats in the Diamondbacks lineup. So go with your best defender. In the air to center. Pollock. Well, once again, Bronson Royals rams the two out single. He's got a two nothing lead. Centrally, your link to what's next. Chris Owings leads it off for the Diamondbacks. Nothing lead over the Phillies here in the home half of the second inning. Had a chance to talk to hitting coach, rather, Turner Ward before the game. He said the approach against Cliff Lee was very simple. Be aggressive since the guy pounds the zone and has given up 44 hits coming into this game. So far, so good as the Diamondbacks already have four hits against Lee and are looking to add to that total. Fellas, back to you. Thank you, Cindy. Chris Owings will lead it off in the second against Cliff Lee. Some of those spanky new D-backs jerseys. That's a good look for the Little Leaguers here. Those look good. Part of the Give Back Youth Jersey program. Little League teams all over the valley wearing D-backs colors this year. There's Sowings. Keep the line moving. Five hits already for the Diamondbacks. And to you or someone you know want to call the game up here in the booth with us. Well, if you're between or if they're between the ages of 10 and 14, come on tomorrow right here to Chase Field. It's the Fox Sports Arizona Sanderson Ford Kidcaster auditions. Those are in the sandlot between 11.30 and 1.30 in the afternoon. So we'll see you here tomorrow. So Owings aboard with a leadoff single. And now Bronson Oriole will try and move the runner along. Glenn Sherlock at third. As Cindy mentioned, Cliff Lee, 44 hits allowed in 35 innings coming into tonight. He's already given up five hits through one plus here. No pitcher in baseball has allowed more hits than Cliff Lee, who pounces on that one. He'll set up for the out at first. 1-4 on the putout, and Owings is at second. Hey fans, anytime the D-backs score six runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink Center between field. four and six the Eight following ten. day at Hold participating up. locations. So here's the man who started it off, A.J. Pollock, swung at the first pitch he saw tonight and lined it for a single, came in and scored on a Goldie sack fly, scored the first run. He's got Chris Owings at second, one out. And A.J.'s bat lately has really come alive despite the sword deck. This was Pollock as he takes a strike. Last night, the eighth. 
Line drive home to left field on a breaking pitch that stayed over the outside part of the plate. He went out and got it. That was against the lefty deep, and he's in there against the lefty Lee. Hard to right, Marlon Bird, and that was a to get down. Owens had to hold up. They'll wave him in, and A.J. Pollock is wheels up, headed for third. Tell you what, in his last three at-bats going back to last night, A.J. Pollock now a double shy of the cycle. <laughs> Boy, what a great... Bit of hitting right here, an off-speed pitch up and out over the plate. Didn't try to pull it. Stayed right on that ball. Drove it to the opposite field. Chris Owen is going to score easily. Pretty good cutoff right there by Chase Utley to get his momentum going toward the target. But too much speed for AJ Paul. First triple this season. Won't be his last. He gets those long legs and those high strides going. An excellent base runner, and he can fly around those bases. Still only one out. Here's Prado. And you know, as we've talked about, you're going to get something to hit with Cliff Lee because he never walks anybody. His command is outstanding. So his unusually high hit totals don't always translate into a lot of base runners. His whip, which as we've talked about, is walks and hits per innings pitch. It's just about league average at 1-3, so... He hasn't given up a ton of runs this year. The ERA is barely over three. But the Diamondbacks uh, not looking for walks. They're up there hacking. We may start to see a few more of those. The straight change up that time from Cliff Lee. He likes to pitch with just a two-seam fastball in the cutter. He works them both on the inside and outside corner. But uh, that changeup is a good weapon for him. And when the Diamondbacks are attacking the early fastballs the way they have been, I would expect him to start throwing a few more straight changeups. Two and two to Prado. Hitting coach Turner Ward. Cody Ross at RBI single, his first at bat tonight. On the ground to Rollins, he's coming home. With the infield in, A.J. might have been better served by holding up there, so he's out at home. Prado's a boy. First baseman, Paul Goldschmidt. And a little bit of a late jump that time by A.J. Pollock. That's the old contact play. You're going on anything put in play on the ground. Unfortunately, the late jump and the accurate throw by Jimmy Rollins. Runs right into an easy out at home plate that time. Are you a fan of that play? Because so often you see the guys just a dead duck at home. Not a big fan of it. I think it depends on situation, obviously, and who the runner is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of contact plays end up just like that. Guys getting thrown out by a wide margin at home plate. So Prado at first, two down, 0 and 1 to Goldie. RBI sack fly his first time. He drove in the game's first run. These two have seen each other before. Citizens Bank, August of 2012. Two home runs that Goldie has against Cliff Lee. As a matter of fact, coming into this game, both hits he'd had against Cliff Lee left the ballpark. Two for nine coming into today. One and one. There goes Prado at first. Ruiz throws down there, and Martin is out of there. So the Diamondbacks run into two outs on the bases. But they do get one run across, and through two, they lead the Phillies 3-0 here on Patrick Corbin bobblehead night. And when we come back, we'll have the actual Patrick Corbin.
Jackson at Chase Field, and we have the man himself in the booth with us, All-Star Patrick Corbin, who we just noticed as Cliff Lee knocks the first pitch of the game into center field. Uh, your left arm uh, is a little less encumbered than it was when you were up here a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I got my uh, got my brace off today, so I'm nice. uh, just starting to move it around and uh, I'm starting to be able to do some normal things. Center fielder. How's that feel? I mean, here. obviously yeah. you've been kind of held in one position. Yeah, no, it's there. good. I mean, I got most of my range back. Um, just still working on it, trying to um, get get my full motion back. But uh, I mean, where I am at the point at this point, I think it's uh, a month and one day um, today. <laughs> good. I got a little ice on my elbow there. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, everything feels fine from where I am. So here's Ben Revere. And now, I know this is a dumb question, but what, what's it like to have two, what, 20,000 of these wandering around the ballpark? Yeah, I um, I mean, I never I never thought I'd ever have a, bowl, or a bobblehead or anything like that. And my parents actually are here for, for today. And I, I mean, I wish, they, wish I was going, but... Well, Chris Owens had a chance to get two and won't get anything. So they flew in from Clay for this? Yeah, yeah. The, well, they came in for uh, the week to visit. Nice. Um, yeah, so they'll, Did you they'll clean the place? Yeah, yeah, vacuum? Yeah, I had to clean for the first time probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's an error on the shortstop, Owings. And so the Phillies have uh, two on. Nobody out to open the third against Bronson Arroyo. Now, what can you do now with the brace off that you couldn't before? Um, well, I mean, you, when I'm in the training room, I usually take it off. The brace is more for if, if you fall or bump into something, and I um, just want to be careful. But but where I am now, most of my motion's back. So, um, just I mean, still got to be careful, not really lifting anything. I'm still really lightweight right now, and uh, just working on your range of, mo range of motion, and I'm able to um, actually go in the gym and lift my legs now. So, Okay, and that's critical for a pitcher, as we know. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you adjusted to the year off? I know that was a big part of the early process for you, not being able to be out there every fifth day. And I, I know you're very much a part of things here, but have you adjusted to what you're going through over the course of this season? Uh, no, I mean, it's still tough coming here every day, and, you know, I'm not going to be able to pitch. Um, I mean, that's what I love to do, and that's what I want to do. So, um, no, it's tough coming in, but hopefully, I mean, just try to be as good as a teammate as I can and um, try to help the team in other ways. Well, speaking of being a good teammate, we've had several shots uh, during the course of the season of Bronson Arroyo kind of holding court over in the dugout with, with some of the other pitchers. Uh, what does he bring to the table, a guy with the kind of experience that Bronson has? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I see other guys all the time just going up to him, asking him questions. I mean, he's faced everybody, I mean, in baseball probably. I mean, he's been around for so long, has so much information that, I mean, just the more you talk to him, the more you're going to learn. And that's what a lot of pitchers like to do. Chris Owens, and now they get the double up of Lee. It came one batter later than scheduled. And there's some COD. So too bad Jimmy Rollins didn't get a little more adventurous over there at first base. D-backs may have turned three on that one. Nicely done there by Chris Owens going into the glove to get that ball before his feet even came back down to the ground. Look at him making the exchange while he's still up in midair. Easy toss on to second for the double play. And a break for the Diamondbacks. Now quickly two down with the uh, Revere at first. And here's Chase Utley. Now we had you as our roving reporter a couple of weeks ago when you interviewed people about your own bobblehead. And that was hysterical because nobody seemed to knew, know it was you. Yeah, I know. Were you surprised? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. I was nervous doing it. I had no idea what, what was going to happen or what to expect. And... Um, I thought the funny one was when, when I told the guy pointed to my elbow and had an arm sleeve on and said he had a sort of injury like this one and he, had, he still had no clue. So. <laughs> and then this was earlier today. How about this Patrick Corbin bobblehead day? You get there and Patrick Corbin hands you the bobblehead. Yeah, it was, yeah no, I mean, something, I mean, just thanking the fans for coming out and supporting the team and um, just, I mean, whatever I can do, I got a lot of free time now. <laughs> well, sadly, that's true. Well, and you spent a lot of that free time this afternoon signing autographs, signing those bobblehead dolls. We saw you going down the third baseline uh, probably for the better part of an hour or more, just signing one autograph after another. Yeah, just, I mean, guys kept, they just kept handing the bobbleheads. I was going to sign uh, basically until the game started, so. Well, I'm sure Diamondback fans appreciate 
seeing you at the gate, seeing you down on the field. And as Bob mentioned, it, this was not a 10-minute deal. You were down there for a long time making sure that everybody got something signed. And I, I just think that speaks a lot about who you are as a person and what this organization is all about as well. Yeah, I mean, it's just just thanking the fans. I mean, there's, I mean, you're not going to have a bobblehead every day. And, um, I mean, I'm not playing today. Just kind of would be sitting in the dugout or in the clubhouse. So I just want to go out there and uh, pretty much thank them for coming. And it's a great crowd here with the roof open and the Diamondbacks leading the Phillies 3-0. We're here with Patrick Corbett on Patrick Corbett Bobblehead Day. How do you top a bobblehead day, by the way? What, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> we got to come up with something. <laughs> now, what, what's on schedule for, uh, for the folks this week? Did they just uh, get here for this, or have they been? Um, they've been here for a couple of days now. Just I mean, for keeping them, them entertained. Anything out in New York right now, Syracuse. I mean, I mean the weather here. I mean, so this is nice. For, this, I mean, this would be a summer day in, in Syracuse. It's a little so. bleak up there. Right yeah, now, huh? but um, no, they enjoy coming to the ball games. They're always watching the games, um, even when I'm not playing. So, um, I mean, they have a fun time out here. So I'll just hang out with them. I haven't seen them in a while. Watching Cliff Lee pitch for the Phillies tonight. Who were some left-handers that you watched growing up that maybe uh, you know were your favorite pitchers or guys maybe you want to model your game after a little bit? Can I guess? Yan Yankee fan, lefty, 46. Yeah, yeah. Same. Andy Pell. Yeah. yeah. Andy no, Pell. I mean, yeah, I grew up a, a big Yankee fan. Uh, him and, and Tino Martinez. Those are my my two favorite uh, players to watch. And, uh, I mean, just, I mean here, being here watching Cliff Lee. I mean, yeah, he's. I mean, I got to talk to him last year during the All Star game and. Um, I mean, he was awesome, great guy, and um, good competitor. And I mean, he's out there battling. He's behind three nothing. Diamondbacks about hit the Phillies six to three. Bronson Arroyo one and two now on Chase Utley, trying to strand Ben Revere at first. What did last night's win? And I know you were down there for that. How how does it? How different does it feel now after three wins in a row than it did say? Uh, when we were last year at Chase Field. Yeah, I mean, I feel like guys now that I mean, we're coming to the ballpark and it just feels like we're going to win. And, uh, we're not thinking any other way. And um, I mean, that's the mindset. I mean, that's just how baseball is. You got to have a good mindset come in day in and day out. And expect to win. There's Goldie and Arroyo keeps the Phillies scoreless. So, Patrick, thanks very much. And this is it the Patrick Corbin bobblehead. Good likeness. <laughs> Be at Chase Field the weekend of May 16th through the 18th. Diamondbacks and Dodgers. You can salute the King Friday Elvis night. As Goldie leads off the home half of the third. Then Saturday, be one of the first 20,000 to get a Gerardo Parra bobblehead. That's the next bobblehead day. And then Sunday, the first 10,000 moms get the D-back slippers. 
And then everyone can celebrate the 10th anniversary of Randy Johnson's perfect game. And Randy will be here for that. That's a big deal. Go to dbacks.com slash tickets, and we'll see you the weekend of the 16th through the 18th of May for the D-backs and the Dodgers. Goldschmidt, Montero, Hill, 3, 4, and 5 against Cliffland. Goldie and RBI sack fly his first time. Three and two. Paul Goldschmidt has hit in seven straight games in 12 of his last 13. Leading the National League in hits. Against the guy who's given up more hits than any pitcher in baseball. And there's the walk to lead off the third. And there's a base runner. Bob d had a few base runners in the last inning, but uh, they ran into a pair of outs on the bases. It's tough to fault A.J. Pollock. He was going uh, on contact as the runner at third base, and the ball was hit right at Jimmy Rollins at shortstop. You combine that with a slow jump at third, and A.J. is dead out at home plate. And then Martin Prado on a stolen base attempt. Kind of got the right leg up and over the base. Didn't really hit the bag until his left leg got in there. Maybe a little better slide would have made it a close play, maybe even been safe at second base. You see, look at Dudley trying to block the bag there with that leg. Yeah, you go in hard with that right foot right toward the base. Not only do you probably beat the throw, but you get a piece of chase up. Miguel Montero singled and scored his first time up. Saw something that very few people get to see. Base on balls from Cliff Lee. Only two all year coming into today. So Miggy with his first inning single has now hit safely in 12 of his last 15. He lifts that in the air the other way, but right to Dominic Brown. And that's the first out here in the third. Second baseman. Aaron Hill Aaron last night's hitting Hill. hero. All right, it was a loud one. Hey! The fourth inning way back in the bleachers in left field. Aaron Hill really heating up, swing is much quicker, recognizing pitches much quicker, making solid contact on the barrel, everything you like to see. The two-run homer in the fourth, the RBI double in the fifth. And he singled his first time up tonight. D-backs fans, a lot of kids here tonight. That's great to see. A lot of families, a lot of kids. A 1-0 misses. It's 2-0. Well, now that the zombies are gone, the kids get safe to come out. back yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> Up in the sandlot. Sponsored by Phoenix Children's Hospital. This glove ready to go. Two and one. John Tompain, the plate umpire. Well, you work yourself into a two and zero oh count, and then a borderline at best strike on that outside corner. That's a good take by Aaron Hill. You don't want to swing at that pitch. Counts in your favor. The two strike counts. You got to open that strike zone up just a little bit more, possibly swinging something uh, around the edges. But boy, two and zero. Oh, you don't want to swing at anything that's not the pitch you're looking for. So two balls and two strikes to Aaron Hill. One out. Paul Goldschmidt at first. Aaron shoots it the other way. Goldie heads for third. Aaron Hill is in at second. His ninth double. And the D-backs are now taking their foot off the gas pedal against Cliff Lee. Talk about Carlos Ruiz and the smart hitting he did against Bronson Arroyo. Look at the location of all the pitches to Aaron Hill. Away, away, away. So, hey, if you're going to go out there, I'm going to drive to the opposite field. 
Had every intention of hitting that ball that direction. Got the pitch he was looking for. And puts a couple of D-backs in scoring position here for Cody Ross. Bob McClure is the Phillies pitching coach. New fan, do you think you're Arizona's number one super fan? You have until April 30th to prove it. The winner gets the Sports Lovers Dream Package. So log on to FoxSportsArizona.com slash superfan for all the details. Mentioned Cliff Lee gives up a lot of hits, and that has been playing out here tonight as Cody steps in. Oh, we have a leader in the clubhouse. And him on Randy Johnson now. He's got a big unit kind of a look going there. Cody Ross jumped on the first delivery he saw from Cliff Lee, his first at bat. Well, three times this season, Cliff Lee has given up double digit hit totals. His first time out at Texas gave up 11 hits in five. Then his next start, 10 hits in seven at Wrigley Field. Two starts ago, 11 hits against the Braves. Goldie at third, Hill at second. One out here in the third. That is a fair ball. It's down the left field line. Goldschmidt scores. Here comes Aaron Hill. And it's 5 nothing Diamondbacks. Cody Ross, welcome back. Two for two. Just hammered it right by Freddie Galvis at third base. Barely had time to react to that one. Easily driving home a couple. He backs with two in the first, one in the second. Now two more in the third and still going. As Serrano Parra steps in. Cody Ross has seen three pitches in this ball game. Has three RBI. Eight hits now for the D-backs. Parra, that is lifted into shallow center. Revere coming in. Got a late break on it. And that's the second out. They are going up there, Bob, and they are swinging. I like the approach. Show me stop. You got to know the strengths and weaknesses of the opposing pitcher that night. And certainly one of the strengths for Cliff Lee throughout his career has been his ability to throw strikes consistently. So go up there and be ready to hit a strike. And Patrick Corbin mentioned it. They feel now when they show up at the ballpark, they're going to win. The tide is slowly turning here with these Diamondbacks. Chris Owings singled and scored his first time. CO back in the starting lineup after sitting out the series finale at Wrigley Field and last night's series opener. He's at 304 on the year. Chris Owings has hit very well here at Chase Field. 467 home batting average. That's third in the big leagues behind only a pair of Coors Field hitters. The Rockies, Troy Tulowitzki and Charlie Blackman. And he's one for one so far today. 2-0. and oh. Freeman. Yeah. Big hello to Bobby's mother watching back in Parma, Ohio. Big Diamondbacks fan, big Bobby fan. Who isn't? Three and one. Well, they're one run shy of tacos. There's the strike. It's full three and two. See if Owings can get aboard. Keep the line moving here. The Diamondbacks could clear the pitcher spot with Arroyo on deck. Out in the right. That might drop, and it just misses.
Three two pitch two outs Ross off of the pitch that one's in the dirt and it gets behind Ruiz Cody will stay put at second two walks in the inning by Cliff Lee who had walked only two batters all year coming into tonight. That's why we come to the ballpark every day. I see something that uh, is rarely seen. Two on and two out, and now Arroyo will come up. And a nice sacrifice bunt his first time. See if he can sneak one through the infield here. It's amazing how much of this game is contagious. When things started off badly, it seemed to affect everything. The base running, the offense, the defense. And now things feel much differently after three wins in a row and a 5 nothing lead. Giants won today. They beat Cleveland 5-3. Rockies and Dodgers later tonight in L.A. Lee strikes out Arroyo. The Diamondbacks strand two, but they get two more and through three. They lead the Phillies 5-0. Cody Ross, two for two. He had one hit all year. He's got three RBIs. to what's next and buy Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box and try the new Jack's Blazing Chicken Sandwich. It's Jack's hottest sandwich yet. Little snake talk. Mm. That's from the Outdoor Street Festival before the ball game. They had all kinds of things going on out there. The Outdoor Rec Festival. You can pet a gator. He seems thrilled. Warm and cuddly. <laughs> Well, the Diamondbacks have been anything but so far. They lead the Phillies 5-0. They've out hit Philadelphia 8-3. And Ryan Howard steps in against Bronson Arroyo to lead off the fourth. There's a strike on one. Howard grounded out his first time. Howard, Bird, Brown, 4-5-6. And, and Bronson Arroyo looks terrific so far through the first three innings, 42 pitches, 30 for strikes. And he has been very efficient. That has popped up a mile high. Prado's the only one over there with a shift on. And there's the first out. Miguel Montero compares Bronson Arroyo to Levon Hernandez, a guy who never really threw hard but survived as a consistent workhorse, guile, location, all that stuff. And Arroyo will tell you, you know, I don't really throw that many pitches. 
but he does throw a lot of variations on those pitches. As Bob has mentioned, he'll change angles on a breaking ball. Sometimes it looks to the hitter like a slider. Other times it might look like a curveball. So they're reacting differently to the exact same pitch. And he will add and subtract, and that's how he is successful. You know, another thing about that approach, uh, when you talk about uh, LeVon Hernandez and Bronson Arroyo and pitchers of that ilk, you have to understand that you're going to give up some hits. You're going to give up some runs. Uh, you have to go into a ball game with the mindset that the bottom line is, I want to give my team a chance to win. And if I end up giving up five or six runs, but my team scores six or seven, that's fine with me. Yvonne Hernandez never really cared too much about his own personal numbers. He just wanted to give his team a chance to win. And Bronson Royo is right out of that same mold. Drop down sidearm sinker that time, and Marlon Bird fouls it off his front leg. And Arroyo will often start the game out throwing slower fastballs, which he says to the hitters seem like changeups, and then he will add velocity the next time through. Most pitchers do it the other way. AJ Pollock will have that drop in front. And Marlon Bird has a one-out single. That's the fourth hit for the Phillies, all singles. Like that frisbee slider that just kind of stayed out there on the outside corner. Bird hits it right off the end of the bat, which freezes A.J. Pollock momentarily in center field. Saw the big swing, but it wasn't good contact, and that one drops in front. Brings up Dominic Brown. He popped up his first time. Well, as a hitter, I, obviously I never faced Bronson Arroyo, but I would think going into this game, you'd almost approach it like you're facing a knuckleball pitcher. You know, don't expect to see a 95-mile-an-hour fastball. You might not see an 85-mile-an-hour no. fastball. <laughs> you, know, just, you have to kind of slow everything down a little bit, slow your mindset in that batter's box. Especially those guys that play every day. That's why so many times when a knuckleball pitcher pitches, you see all the bench guys in the lineup because the manager doesn't want his regular guys to get messed up. Well, how hard an adjustment is that when you're consistently facing guys that throw 94, 95? We all see the radar gun readings, and here's this guy throwing 60 mile an hour curveballs and 84 mile an hour fastball. It's hard to convince yourself to stay back and let the ball travel. Now you see it out of his hand. The most recent at bats you've had, the guy maybe was throwing in the mid 90s. Now you see, you know, same kind of delivery, same kind of arm angle, but the ball's up there 10 miles an hour or more slower. Everything has to slow down. Two and two on Dominic Brown. Chris Owings. That's the second out. Hey, fans, follow every d max game with MLB.com at bat. Use your favorite mobile phone or tablet. You'll get live look instant replay, score stats, audio, a free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit d Carlos Ruiz single his first time up. He has one of four Phillies hits. Arroyo has been remarkably consistent so far tonight. In terms of the pitches and the strike percentage, 13 pitch first, 16 pitch second, 13 pitch third each time, throwing 10 for strikes. As opposed to Cliff Lee, who has twice faced seven batters in one inning, both in the first and the third. One on one. D-backs looking for their fourth straight win. They lead it 5 nothing. Carlos Ruiz just had a big series against the Dodgers this week. Four games in L.A. Seven hits and 14 at-bats. Four doubles, a triple, and a home run. Royal behind, 3-1. Oh, 
Casey, that's pretty much over the top. High three quarters delivery that time. But you might not see that particular arm angle again until three at bats from now. Misses with a lollipop breaking ball, and there's the walk. So the Phillies now have two on and two out for Freddie Galvis. So you got one for 26 coming up next. There's no reason to groove one to Carlos Ruiz. Pick your battles. So it's Bird at second, Ruiz at first, two down, Freddie Galvis flying out to center his first time. One for 26 to open his ear. There's a strike. Galvis opened the season on the DL. He was suffering from a staph infection in his left knee. And for some reason, turned out to be very resistant to most antibiotics, so he was slow to heal. That was a long spring. It's a good looking truck, Graham trucks. It is. I think that's out of Freddie Galvis's range. <laughs> Ryan Howard, that might be a different story. Fieldine Horn. 0 oh 2. Aaron Hill. A single and a walk in the end for the Royals. Strands 2. We'll head to the home half of the fourth. It's 5 0 Diamondbacks. Who will play the game? Pretty good April for Gonzo that year. Let's keep counting. I loved it. Center fielder, AJ Pollock. Well, AJ Pollock has been hitting like Gonzo lately. In his last at bat, last night he homered. His first at bat tonight he singled. His second at bat he tripled. So he, if he doubles here, that's a cycle in four consecutive bats over two games. Is that legal? Well, sure. <laughs> it doesn't count for anything, but it's perfectly legal. Being waved off by our highly, highly unreliable staff member up in the booth. The fanatic of sorts. Doesn't want to fully own up to it. Has the shades on it. He's not big on accountability, that guy. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no <laughs> doubt. Martin Prado. Here's Prado. A lot of Phillies fans here. Saw some uh, 
Eagles jerseys before the ball game. So uh, Randall Cunningham jerseys and Flyer sweaters. The Broad Street Bullies. So some Philadelphia fans are here. There's a strike to Prado. And I would imagine the Phillies are one of those teams that travel well. Pretty big fan base. Only the ballparks that sell cheesesteaks. Are there any others? They sell cheesesteaks here, I think, upstairs. We'll have to uh, explore that. Call. You send Dennis Lamb on a cheesesteak run. <laughs> that is out of play. What we need is a guy from Philly to compare the two. I don't know if we'd get a fair judgment on that. In Philly, though, they're big on the cheese whiz. You know, a lot of places put some kind of mozzarella cheese on their Philly cheesesteak, but uh, a true cheesesteak from Philly has cheese whiz. Whiz wit. Trotta reaches down and pops that up again. Cheese with a Z. We have Governor Jan Brewer in the house today, and we have the governor. The question is, who wields more authority? Around here, the governor is, uh, I mean, he runs the show. The governor, she's got a lot more on her plate, though, than Greg Schulte. Right to Utley. And Cliff Lee settles down with a 1, 2, 3, 4. Through four, the Diamondbacks. After a seven pitch for it, lead it by the Man, if you are celebrating your birthday here at Two more in the third, jumping all over Cliff Lane. They have out hit the Phillies 8-4. They've handed Bronson Arroyo a 5-0 lead as Cliff Lee steps in to open the fifth. Lee Revere Rollins, 9-1 and 2. Bronson Arroyo so far, one walk, one strikeout. He has allowed one single in each of the first four innings. Cliff Lee from Benton, Arkansas. Originally a Montreal Expos draft pick. That one is along the left field line. Cody Rose makes a sliding grab. Cody's got a pair of singles, three RBIs, and he's got himself a gorgeous defensive play. A real nice play. Knew he was getting close to the barrier over there, right on the foul line. Goes into a slide to protect himself. Never took his eye off that baseball. Nice play. Well, we saw some great defense out there in left field by Tony Campana last night, and now Cody Ross tonight. As the Diamondbacks try and circle the wagons out there, while Mark Trumbo was out at least six weeks with that broken bone in his foot. 
Ben Revere, 0 for 2. Ben Revere has put together a remarkable streak. He has not hit a home run since May 30th of 2011 when he was in AAA. And he has never homered in the big leagues. He still has it. <laughs> streak is intact. Hey, fans, it's time to tweet your photo using hashtag d fan photo. Actually, that's hashtag AZ fan photo. We changed that. Hashtag AZ fan photo. You might have your fan photo shown in our game broadcast later in the game. It's brought to you by AT&T. Just send it out there on the Twitter and use the hashtag AZ fan photo. She's sending her photo in right now. Jimmy Rollins. Now, we mentioned that Revere is never homered in the big leagues. He's approaching 1,500 career plate appearances without a home run. And since 1947, no hitter, excluding pitchers, has come up that many times without hitting even one home run. And the only other players who had longer streaks who eventually did homer were guys like Giants announcer Dwayne Kuyper. He went 1,532 plate appearances before hitting the only home run of his career, your boy, Kuiper. Yeah, against Steve Stone. And the Giants celebrated Kuiper's homer last night with a bobblehead in that classic 1970s Indians uniform, the red jerseys, the red pants, the whole thing, because Cleveland playing at San Francisco this weekend. How about that? And so Smoothie. You've got the Kuiper homer and the bobblehead, and you've got Revere now bearing down on him, getting near 1,500 plate appearances without a home run. That one is dropped into shallow right center. And it's another two-out single for the Phillies. The thing a lot of people don't know about Dwayne Kuiper is he actually hit another home run. It was in an exhibition game. Second uh, we were playing for the Chase Giants. We Huckley. used to play in a rotating schedule, Santa Clara. San Jose State and Stanford in an exhibition game at some point on an off day during the season. And Dwayne Kuyper took some poor guy from Stanford deep in that exhibition game. <laughs> that didn't count them. They immediately revoked his scholarship, threw him out. <laughs> Jay Sutley singled in the first. He's one for two. By the way, the previous record for powerlessness. <laughs> was a former Brewer and Blue Jay infielder Tim Johnson. He went 1,408 plate appearances in the big leagues and never homered. That was in the mid-70s. And Revere has passed him. He's now bearing down on 1,500. Hard to short. Owens back in. They go the short way for the force on Rollins, and that ends the fifth. Robson Arroyo keeping the Phillies off the scoreboard, holding a 5 0 lead. Central Lake, your link to what's next coming up for the D backs. It's 4 5 and 6. Montero, Hill, Ross.
Yeah. Five nothing Diamondbacks. Bottom five. Miguel Montero leads it off against Cliff Lee. First pitch swing right to Ryan Howard. One away. One pitch, one out. So Montero Second one for three. Aaron and here is Aaron Hill who continues his offensive surge on his homestand. Had a big night last night. A home run, an RBI double. So far, he's two for two. And he's moving up the charts. Singled in the first, doubled and scored in the third. Talking about how the Diamondbacks can overcome the loss of Mark Trumbo. And this is a key guy right here, Aaron Hill, get his bat going. I mean, he can really produce in the middle of this order. Get Cody Ross going from the right hand side. Ryan Howard with a nice play to stop that one. Lead of the bag is just ahead of Aaron Hill for the second out. Nice stop by Howard and a nice recovery. The athletic play by Cliff Lee getting over there to cover the bag at first after Ryan Howard kind of tackles that one down there. Finally finds the baseball, the backhanded toss. Could have very easily led Cliff Lee right into the base runner that time, but managed to avoid each other. And Hill goes down on the 3-1 put out at first. Well, Howard's mobility has been limited since he's had Achilles and knee injuries. And lately he's been taken out of ball games late in the game. It actually cost him a key at bat after Mayberry had to come in and pinch run for him late last night. But Howard looked like he could move around pretty well there. Cody Ross, a pair of singles. He's got three RBIs. Diamondbacks are being every bit as aggressive against Cliff Lee as they were in those first three innings. But Lee is now starting to hit his spots a little better. The contact is not nearly as good. Balls being put into play at defenders. That's why you got to jump the good ones early before they have a chance to settle in. He's retired the last six he's faced. Two and one. Great way to get Cody Ross's bat started is get him in there against left hand pitching. Last year among players with at least 100 at bats against lefties. No National League player did better than Cody Ross. He crushed left-hand pitching in a 391 clip last year, including four home runs. Two and two. And something that's always an issue for a manager when you have a guy like Cody Ross who you expect to be a big part of your offense and he gets off to a slow start the way Cody did. Well, how do you get him out of that? Not sitting on the bench next to the manager. You got to get your advance. You have to get in there, get your rhythm, get your timing, see more live pitching. And even though Cody swung the bat well on his rehab assignment in Reno, Triple A's Triple A. The big leaguers are the big leagues, and uh, Cody struggled initially, but starting to find that rhythm, starting to make better contact, especially against those lefties. As Kirk Gibson said, you know. He wanted to give Cody some days off, and he did. He was not in the starting lineup Thursday in Chicago. Sat out again last night. And it's a difficult balance. You got a player coming back from a severe injury. Got to get the bat going. He has to play to get there. But at the same time, needs to give Ross some time to recover. Bird and right. One, two, three, fifth for Cliff Lee. He's retired seven straight. We are through five, and it's five nothing defense.
Sandberg is 267th home run. Breaks Joe Morgan's major league record for homers by a second baseman. He has since been passed by Jeff Kent. But that happened on this date. Of course, like cold hard facts, there it is. He finished with 277. Kent 351. And he might be a Hall of Famer, Jeff Kent. He'll share support, no doubt about it. Ryan Sandberg early on in his major league career was kind of a punch and Judy hitter. He gives a lot of credit to Jim Fry as the guy that really turned him around said, you know, you're a big strong kid. You should be hitting some more home runs and National League pitchers will forever hate Jim Fry for that. Well, here's a guy that's hit a few homers Ryan Howard. He leads off the six. He's 0 for 2 and a lot of the focus on Ryan Howard this year has been his back leg. He's got that torn left Achilles the torn left knee ligament. Coming off those injuries, all on that backside leg, it's affected, they think, his ability to turn on a ball. And perhaps his confidence in that lower half when he hits isn't quite what it was. I mean, a batter's weight will shift back and forth during the course of his swing, but ultimately you get your weight on that back leg and then drive into the baseball. And we'll see if you've had some injuries to the knee, ankle, hip, any part of that back leg. Uh, it's going to be an adjustment until you get that strength back in there. And Back to feeling the way you did before the injury if you ever get back to that point. And this is a guy that put up some fantastic home run numbers. He had 58 home runs one year. And Ruben Amaro, their GM, said, Look, if he hits 30 home runs, I'll take it. And he thinks that's exactly what they're looking for right now from Ryan Howard. At the age of 34, he strikes out for the first out here in the sixth. Well, the second strikeout of the game for Bronson Arroyo, the very first batter. Ben Revere struck out. And now leading off here in the top of the sixth, Ryan Howard goes down. Marlon Bird one for two. He singled his last time. Marlon Bird spent most of last year with the Mets and. Went there on a minor league deal, just looking for a job, and had a tremendous season, all things considered. Hit 285, 21 home runs. And then when the Pirates needed another bat for their playoff run, they went to Pittsburgh and they got Bird just before September. He played 30 games with the Buckos down the stretch, hit 320. And then it is. 13th big league season went to the postseason for the first time and he was great there too he homered in their wild card game that went over the Reds had six hits in five games in the division series lost to the Cardinals and now he's here with the Phillies on a two-year deal a ball and two strikes Bird is 36. He'll turn 37 in August. Well, Bird be a nice ad for any team looking for a postseason berth. A high energy guy works extremely hard. He's got his limitations. He's a very aggressive hitter. Doesn't usually see a lot of pitches. Either hits or outs very early in at bats. But uh, boy, he likes to get after it. Loves to play the game. 80 pitches now for Bronson Arroyo, 53 for strikes. He's given up just five hits, all singles. Downtown Phoenix, a little cool tonight. The cold weather is following us around. Maybe not quite that cold. <laughs> two and two. That one is hit high in the air. Cody Ross backs up and left. He might have room here. He's got it at the track. Left fielder. Keep it in the yard. Keep the kitchen sink in the kitchen. That one hit a mile high. Bird just got underneath it. Very consistent for Bronson Arroyo tonight. And now with two outs of the bases empty, he'll work to Dominic Brown, who's 0 for 2. 
Dominic Brown, a guy last year with the age of 25, he's now 26. Finally had that breakthrough season that the Phillies and their fans were waiting for. 27 homers, 83 RBIs, an all-star game appearance. But this season, the power has not been there for Dom Brown. And the thing about his power and why the Phillies aren't too worried about it, he's very streaky. The home runs seem to come in bunches, and he just says, look, I've always been that way. Not sure why. Last year, 18 of his 27 homers came in May and June. And he homered only four times after the All-Star break. Two and two. So when he gets going, he hits him, but the Diamondbacks might be catching him at a good time here. As long as your good streaks last longer than your bad streaks, you can stay around for a while. That one is hard but foul. Down the line and right. Mike Galloway was uh, perfectly positioned there to play the carom, but never did get one. There's Mike, our Golden Glover, down the right field line. John Kladnick in left. He's got a big glove out there. That one's in the dirt. It's full three and two. Well, based on the last two starts, Bob, and what we've seen tonight from Bonson Arroyo, this is an enormous improvement. Oh, no question about it. Command much better. Better use of his off-speed pitches. I think there were times uh, some of his starts in the past where he felt he had to trick opposing hitters right out of the shoot. But uh, tonight he looks like he felt like he had his fastball. He could spot it when he wanted, where he wanted. Longest outing by innings this season for Bronson Arroyo. Right to Goldie. Arroyo works a one, two, three, six. It's still a goose egg for the Phillies. Diamondbacks lead it by nothing. Friends and get out to a D Max game and live it. It's time to live for now. Pepsi, it's the official soft drink of the Arizona Diamondbacks. We back the D Backs. Remember Big Lebowski when uh, Jeff Bridges is in Ralph's buying milk? Very uh, opening scene. Kind of that kind of reminded me of <laughs> the opening of the Big Lebowski. <laughs> this aggression uh, will not stand, man. Diamondbacks have been very aggressive here against Cliff Lee. They lead it 5-0. Para. Owings in Arroyo spot here in the bottom of the sixth. Lee has retired the last seven he's faced. D-backs got two in the first, one in the second, and two in the third. For Donnie, who loved to bowl. Bounced right to Ryan Howard. Lee covers one away. Yeah. 
Brings up Chris Owens. Chris has been on base twice tonight. He singled and scored in the second. And walked in the third. As Lee would walk to only two batters all year coming into the game. Walked to two Diamondbacks in that third. One scored. It was Goldie who led off the third with a base on bonus. Chris Owings is not going to make anybody forget Wade Boggs and his ability to draw the base on balls, but uh, he's drawn seven walks this year. I think uh, it's a little bit more than people anticipated. That's in the air to left. Dominic Brown broke back. Now comes in a long way. Calls off for Veer, and he's got it for the second out. That's nine straight set down by Lee. Fox Sports supports a proud partner of the AYSO's 50th anniversary celebration, including AYSO Soccer Fest 14. It's the biggest pickup game on earth, and you can join the fun by signing up at AYSO.org. So Arroyo will hit in the sixth. I think you're right on, Bob, about Chris Owings. You have to be very encouraged with the plate discipline, and that's something we wanted to emphasize with him. A guy who had a long track record of not taking walks, being very aggressive up there, maybe too much. And they certainly didn't want him to lose that aggressiveness, but sort of refine it, perhaps, as the Royal looks at strike three. So ten straight set down by Lee, but he's down 5 nothing as we head to the seventh. All going tonight through six innings. He's given up only five hits, all singles, and he has kept the Phillies scoreless. AJ Pollock got him started with a single and a run scored in the first, then an RBI triple in the second, and Cody Ross has driven in three. A Cody comeback. He's two for three with three RBIs. As we start the seventh inning, it's five nothing Diamondbacks, and Bronx and Arroyo Bob is rolling along out there. Yeah, he really is. I would expect it to be a fairly short leash from this point forward just uh, because of his past history this season. And you certainly want to get him out of there on a positive note, but uh, no reason for him not to go back out there and start the seventh inning. Been very efficient with his pitches, only 90 up to this point of the ball game. He'll work to the lower third of the Phillies order. Ruiz, Galvis, and the pitcher spot. Just five hits, all singles. Ruiz has been on base twice. He singled and walked. So Arroyo into the 90s now in terms of the pitch count. It's 
Anderson Ford bullpen Joe Thatcher the left hander warms up for the Diamondbacks. Two balls and a strike. 93 pitches now for Arroyo. 60 for strikes. He has been at 90 this year twice. He threw 90 pitches in his second start of the year. Last time out, he threw 99. And Ruiz is aboard for the third time tonight, a leadoff single. Just out of the reach of Martin Prado playing deep down there. Still can't quite close ground quickly enough to get to that one. So here's Galvis. Cliff Lee is in the on deck circle. That one is off the glove of Goldie. Aaron Hill has to hurry. They get Galvis at first, and Ruiz moves up. So that's a 3 6 3 on that out. Goldie got a little bit ahead of himself right there. That ball just hit off his glove. Fortunately for the D backs, ricochets right to Aaron Hill at second base. And Lee has been recalled. And Tony Gwynn Jr. is in the on deck circle for the Phillies. Pinch hitting for Cliff. With Lee. Ruiz on second Number and one out. Tony Gwynn Jr. So that's the book on Lee. D backs, two in the first, one in the second, and two in the third. They jumped all over him early. Jeff Banship, the right hander, is throwing. And Gwynn will hit for Lee. We saw Tony Gwynn Jr. last night. Reached on an error by Cliff Pennington in the seventh Goal inning. Eight. That was a big error in the ball game as the Phillies wound up with the three in the seventh to make it at that point a one run game. So Alan Trammell reminding Paul Goldschmidt to come in a little bit, take the bun away from Tony Gwynn Jr., who had to be sitting in that first base dugout just hoping he'd get an at bat against Bronson Arroyo. Tony Gwynn Jr., five for nine with a homer against Bronson Arroyo in his career. Shoots that one down the left field line. This is trouble. It's in the corner. Ruiz will score, and the Phillies are on the board. It's a 5-1 ball game. RBI double for Tony Gwynn Jr. That's the Phillies' first extra base hit tonight. I think it's six for ten lifetime. We saw Martin Prado. He playing just a step maybe behind the baseline down there at third. Nothing he could do on that one. Gwynn with a late swing just slapped it right down that left field line for an RBI double. Kirk Gibson, 97 pitches, 64 for strikes. And we'll have a discussion here. He wants the left hander.
outstanding start. He had given up only five hits, all singles coming into the seventh. But a Ruiz single, a Gwyn double has made it a 5 1 ball game. Arroyo's nine is over. And here's the left hander, it's Joe Thatcher. He's on for the 12th time this year, a 3 1 2 ERA. Seven of Joe's last eight appearances have been scoreless. He inherits Gwyn at second base with a run in. He has allowed only one of 12 inherited runners to score this year. And it worked to the left hander, Ben Revere. If you're a lefty reliever and you're playing against the Phillies, you know you're going to be busy in that series with all the left-handed hitters they have available in this lineup. A couple of switch hitters that you want to turn around. Joe Thatcher and Ollie Perez needed to get their rest before this weekend series. Well, they both pitched last night. Thatcher worked one-third of an inning. Had a strikeout and gave up two singles. He's behind 1-0 and on Revere. Revere struck out in the first, reached on an error in the third, and grounded out his last time. Friday's front row here at Chase Field. Obviously, with Rollins and Utley and Howard and Bird coming up, you want to limit the number of base runners on ahead of those guys. Right to Juan Samuel at first. Anderson Ford bullpen. It's Trevor Cahill time. Three balls and two strikes to Ben Revere. When it's second with one out. Just over the glove of Chris Owings. Gwynn had to go back to the bag at second. There's a play to third. And it's off the glove of Prado when Revere moves up to second. Gwynn was hung up temporarily, a line drive right at the glove of a leaping Owings. And he had to wait to make sure the ball got into the outfield. And so he was kind of in no man's land there for a while. Yeah, not only did he hold up, he actually went back towards second base. And then when the ball got through to the outfield, he tries to reverse his engines and get into third base. Just a tough short hop for Martin Prado to handle. Let's see Cody Ross either air me that all the way to third base or give him a hop he can handle at third. And as that throw got away right there, Revere able to advance into scoring position himself. They rule that a single for Revere. Error on the left fielder Ross to allow him to get to second base. So now it's second and third. Still one out for Rollins. With Revere's speed, anything through the infield scores two. With the left-handed hitting Chase Utley and Ryan Howard to follow, you leave uh, your left-handed pitcher Joe Thatcher in to face Jimmy Rollins. Remarkably consistent from either side of the plate. Those are the numbers this season for his career. A 268 hitter as a lefty, 271 as a righty. Back to Aaron Hill at second. This will deliver a run. They'll trade the out for the run as Gwynn scores, and it's a 5 2 ball game. Revere moves to third. Second baseman, Chase Utley. And now Thatcher will work to Chase Utley. And there's another big left hand bat right behind him. 
Chase Utley 0 for 5 lifetime against Joe Thatcher. Too many guys can say they've held Chase Utley hitless. <laughs> Not this year anyway. He came into the ball game fourth in the league and hitting at 358. There's the strike on one. Big sweeping slider starts it off the plate inside ends up off the plate low and away Ball covered a lot of territory on its way to the strike zone That's you're trying to strand that one or third two two. Right back with the same pitch again see if you could get a good hitter to chase it twice in a row Not an easy way to make a living. Lifted in the air along the left field line. Cody Ross will give it a look. But it's out of play. Already right, seen Cody tonight make one nice sliding catch along that line of foul. Line. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs, Revere at third. Hard to second. Aaron Hill knocks it down. And they strand Revere. But the Phillies get two. Stretch time at Chase. It's a 5 2 ball game. Century Lake, your link to watch next. Coming up for the Diamondbacks. AJ Pollock swinging a hot bat. Me, I mean, him and Colmender pitched the same. He was, I mean, he was locating, 
just changing speeds uh, is, is the biggest thing for me. Throwing a big curveball in there, slow LeVon Hernandez, we were talking about last night with Cole Minter, um, and change-ups, little, you know, coming from all, all over the, all over the, uh, the angle. <laughs> it was, you know, that's, that's what he does. He's not going to blow you away with, with stuff. He, he just won't, but he gets the job done. Great job. And tonight, unlike some of his previous starts, uh, he was able to throw his fastball where he wanted or once again, like Josh Colmenter last night when he missed, he missed further away from his target where they really couldn't get good swings at him. Exactly. Missed on the on the pitcher side. Yep. A.J. Pollock will lead it off for the Diamondbacks. Looks at a strike. 0-1. The new pitcher for the Phillies is Jeff Manship. He's... On for the eighth time this year. He's been much better lately, though. Had a rough start. An on-roster invitee to spring training. He'll want himself a job. And uh, what has been a troublesome Phillies bullpen. They're having a tough time finding a bridge to their closer, Jonathan Papelbon. So middle relief is proven to be a sore spot. And Manship trying to be part of the solution. A.J. Pollock is on base again. And he is headed for second. Here's the double. That's his sixth double, and he has hit for the cycle in the last two games. The homer in his last at bat last night. Today, he's got a single, a triple, and now a double. A.J. Pollock, obviously part of a revolving door up there at the top of the batting order for the D-backs, but really coming through in a big way. He was only 2 for 29 as a leadoff hitter, but 3 for 4 in the ball game tonight. No doubt about it, he was going to turn the corner and head for second. Batting well over 300 over his last 17 games. He has been consistently an offensive force. Here's Prado. Martin Prado over three. Lifted to center field. Ben Revere coming in. Maybe we talked about this at the top of the show. You go back to Wade Miley if you want, even in Wrigley Field on the 100th anniversary game. But Bolsinger on Thursday. Cole yeah. after last night. Arroyo tonight. What has suddenly changed here? We're going streaking. <laughs> it's nice. Three quality starts in a row. You see the numbers right there. And that's where you get the wins. I think it all starts with your starting pitcher. You get, you know, you get put behind in a hole every game. We said this time and time again. It's tough for the hitters to come out. It's, you know, it brings you, it brings your team down. Get, you know, get some good innings. Get three or four innings. Uh, you know, scoreless runs. Let your let your team score the runs first, and it makes it a lot easier. Paul Goldschmidt. In many cases, it takes away the aggressiveness of your own offense. When your starting pitcher gives up four or five early runs. As an offense, now you need a lot of base runners. So guys are going to take pitches, hoping to get on base via the walk. And yep. you lose that aggressiveness that we saw from the D-backs hitters early in this game against Cliff Lee. Bounce to Galvis at third. Looks Pollock back to the bag and throws out Goldie. Two down. And also, like we said, it's a, it's a big difference when you only need two or maybe three innings out of your bullpen as opposed to five or six. No, no doubt about it. Here's Miggy, who's one for three. He singled and scored in the first. And so the Phillies, with those two runs in the seventh, ended the Diamondbacks starter streak of 18 and two-thirds without giving up an earned run. Carlos Ruiz wants to talk. And here comes Bob McClure, the pitching coach. This is a full-fledged conference now. Team meeting on the mound. You have the base open, the left hand hitting Miguel Montero at the plate, but you got one of the hottest hitters on the planet behind Miggy. So I'm sure Bob McClure just wants to make sure that Carlos Ruiz and Jeff Manship have a real good idea of what they're going to do this and that. It's been a tremendous two-week run here for Miguel Montero, hitting nearly 330 over his last 14 games, including 11 RBIs, so they won't mess with him, and they'll work to the right-hander Hill, who is just as hot these days. 
So pick your poison, they'll pick Hill. Obviously a very small, small sample size here. Miguel Montero in two previous at-bats against Jeff Manship and hit into double plays both times. Aaron Hill one for three lifetime with a walk against Philly right hand. Well, Diamondback fans, uh, happy to see Aaron Hill come up here the way he's been going in this series. And there is the walk to Montero. So two on, two out for the D-backs in the seventh. And here is Aaron Hill today. It started in the first with his base hit off Cliff Lee. He followed with a double in the third. He would later score. That double's the one I really liked right there. That was just a real smart piece of veteran hitting. Cliff Lee was just trying to stay away, away, away. And Aaron Hill just went out there and drove it down that right field line for a double. So Aaron Hill counting tonight. Last 10 games, he's got 12 hits and 8 RBIs. Pollock at second, Montero at first, two down. He's off there, 2 and 0. Oh. Webby, do hitters look different? Because Aaron was scuffling a bit, and now all of a sudden he's hitting everything. Is Absolutely. There a different yeah, he's, body language. He's hot as can be. Well, you can tell probably. I mean, just by the way they walk. You know, the way they they hang their head. I mean, he's he's feeling good. He's he's on fire, which is real nice. He's ahead, 3 and 0. Oh. The way they take pitches. Lori Ross. A pair of singles and three RBIs is on deck. The way they take a pitch tells you that they're feeling good. Well, yeah, yeah. You can I mean, I'm not a hitter, B. <laughs> I know that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we had this discussion. Yeah, we did. <laughs> How'd that go? Had to pull up the numbers on it. <laughs> No, oh, but you're absolutely right. You watch a hitter and, and just his timing with his stride into the ball. Is he keeping his right. hands back? Is he keeping his head on the pitch? Yeah, sometimes I'll tell you just by the way they're taking pitches that they're seeing the ball really good. Ball four. Bases are loaded. And here comes Cody. That one for 22 start seems like a distant memory. The RBI single in the first. And then the two-run single in the third. Cody Ross, our APS Energy All-Star. And we didn't even have time to show. Well, we do have time to show. That nice sliding catch in left field. Bases full of Diamondbacks, two down. Well, even after the intentional walk to Miguel Montero to get to Aaron Hill, looked like they wanted no part of Aaron Hill either. A lot of breaking balls, even that 3-1 slider off the plate away to walk him. There's the strike on one. Two says John Tempain. You gotta be kidding me. I like it. <laughs> that's a pitcher's pitch there, isn't it? Sure is. Wow. That's an umpire's pitch. That's that's <laughs> nothing right there. Broken bat and that one oh. will go into the glove of Ben Revere. So the Diamondbacks leave them loaded. Brandon Webb will see you on Diamondbacks Live following right. the game. Thanks, man. 5-2 Thank as we head to the eighth. Tonight's event is 35,462.
locations. Bundle and save with Cox. The wildlife at Chase Field earlier today, the Outdoor Rec Festival. You got a little bit of everything out there. And inside the ballpark, Joe Thatcher is back out to open the eighth inning with the left-hander, Ryan Howard, set to lead off for Philadelphia. And the shift is on as Aaron Hill moves out to medium right field. And Chris Owings, the shortstop, middle of your picture right there. Moves to where the second baseman would be. Prado all by himself at third. Yeah, the first time Ryan Howard faced Joe Thatcher, he took him deep. Since then, he struck out six times and singled. First pitch swinging, pops him up. Nobody's over there. It's Prado going to have to be. And he drops the ball. He was, I think, looking for help. The problem when you put the shift on is uh, he's out there on an island. Yeah, not only that, Cody Ross playing deep. A.J. Pollock playing deep, respecting Ryan Howard's power. Wind really swirling around in here tonight. A lot more wind down at field level than we're feeling up here in the press box. And that one hit him in the glove, rattled around, and came out. Now you have the left hand hitting Dominic Brown on deck. Marlon Bird is up next. So in theory, you could have Thatcher work to Bird and then pitch to Brown. But instead, Kurt Gibson will go to Trevor Cahill. Trevor's been outstanding in the bullpen so far this year. He's on here in the eighth. Back after this. And he achieves field base 16 through the 18th as the D-backs take on the Los Angeles. It's just $21, and that gets you a bleacher ticket, a hot dog, or a Subway sandwich, a regular Pepsi, plus a cookie. This offer is good for every game. For more information, visit dbacks.com slash value. 21 bucks and all that food gets you here at Chase Field with a whole family. Trevor Cahill time on for the eighth time this year, and he has been a reborn in the bullpen working a Marlin Bird with Howard on first, and there's a strike. Cahill, three scoreless relief appearances since he was removed from the rotation. Six shutout innings back there. And eight strikeouts against only one base hit surrendered. Joe Thatcher threw one pitch to Howard, should have had an out, but to Martin Prado couldn't quite corral it in shallow left, so Howard's aboard, and now Cahill the bird. I mean, look at these outings. Three times out there, he's given up one base hit and has not walked a batter. I mean, you can't look any more different than Trevor Cahill, starter versus reliever. It's been remarkable. And you mentioned the left-handed hitting Dominic Brown in the on-deck circle and the possibility of maybe leaving Joe Thatcher in there to possibly face him. But I mentioned it last night. Dominic Brown's one of those guys with the backward splits. He's hitting 435 against lefties, only 203 against right-handers.
waves at that one. It's two and two. Well, Trevor Cahill with that sinking fastball and this breaking pitch moving down. Both pitches designed to get ground balls. That's what you're looking for right here. It'll be interesting to see the way Kirk Gibson uses this bullpen, keeping in mind Addison Reed has saved games on three consecutive days. Nice block by Miguel Montero. And Kirk Gibson said before the game, he kind of just smirked and said, we'll see when asked if Addison Reed is available. He seemed to know the answer. He just really didn't want to share it. Three and two. Two on, nobody out, and the Phillies have the tying run at the plate here in the eighth. Left fielder, Dominic Brown. Hey, fans, we invite you to play Kachinko by signing up at one of the 16 interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Arizona Diamondbacks regular season home game. Dom Brown 0 for 3. The drop pop up by Prado, a walk to Bird, and Brown is the tying run at the plate. Nobody out in the end. The pitch from Cahill is lined into right. They will stop Howard at third. Phillies with a big threat going in the eighth inning. And it's Carlos Ruiz who has been on base all three times he's been up. A pair of singles and a walk. He has scored a run. And if Trevor Cahill has a ground ball in him somewhere, he needs it right here. That would be a real good time. Carlos Ruiz, obviously all the innings he's caught behind the plate for the Phillies over the course of his career, does not run extremely well. He's only grounded into one double play so far this year. Howard the runner at third. Marlon Bird at second. Dominic Brown at first. Ball one. Singles against Trevor Cahill. Here comes Mike Harkey. Well, those veteran hitters, especially catchers, that kind of understand the situation of the game. What's that pitcher likely to do against me? And for the second time in the ball game, Chu Chuiz just reaches out, and punches that ball into right field. This time to drive home a run. Saw so Aaron Hill do it against Cliff Lee earlier in the ball game. Understand the game situation and where that guy is likely to try to get you out with that next pitch and then come up with a game plan against it. Diamondbacks used five relievers last night, including, including the closer, Anderson Reed, for the third day in a row. And so right now, the Sanderson Ford bullpen is quiet. There is some stirring. And nobody throwing. You have to believe Oliver Perez probably getting loose down there. Once again, if we roll around to the top of the order, you got that string of lefties again. Bird at third, Brown at second, Ruiz at first. 
Nobody out, and here is Freddie Galvis, one for 28 on the year. Pitcher spot is due up next. Cody Ashey, their other third baseman, is on deck. Dale ahead quickly, One's in the dirt. It's even two and two. Good stop by Miggy that time on a change up in the dirt. Smothered that one nicely. Ball drops right out there on home plate. Base is loaded, no outs. Called strike three. Huge at bat there for Trevor Cahill. Big strikeout, first out of the inning. Now a double play could potentially get you out of this inning without any further damage. Cody Ashey will hit for the pitcher. Ashey started at third last night. He was on base twice, a single and a bases loaded walk for an RBI. And he's up again with the bases loaded right here. One and oh. Trevor looking for that ground ball to get out of this mess. That is a fair ball. Bird scores. Here comes Brown. And Cody Ashey has tied the ball game with a two-run pinch hit double. Five Phillies have reached in this inning. A heads up play by Paul Goldschmidt. That ball hit one of the banners down the left, the right field line rather. Didn't go all the way down into the corner. Actually ricocheted back toward the infield, but by the time he's able to get to it, the Phillies have pushed across the tying run. A three run Philadelphia eighth. Still only one out. Second and third for Ben Revere, the top of the order. Infield well in on the grass. Well, this game, a perfect example why wins and losses are not an accurate way to judge a starting pitcher. Bronson Arroyo certainly deserved better than a no decision for his outing today. He was outstanding. One and one. Well, this inning started off badly for the Diamondbacks. Prado got kind of turned around out there and shallow left with the shift on for Howard and a pop up go off his glove. Cahill came in, walked Bird, both those two scored. Since then, it's been single, single, strikeout, double. That is in the air to shallow center. Pollock coming in, hard charging. It drops in front. Ruiz scores, Ashy to third. The Phillies take a 6-5 lead. Oh, a great effort by A.J. coming straight in. Looked like he got it on a short hop anyway. Fortunately, kicks it back toward the infield rather than getting by him. Man. I think it's
stop. An error, a walk, and four base hits in the inning. Still only one out. The Phillies have scored four to take a 6-5 lead. Mike Harkey trying to get somebody up in that bullpen, which is still quiet. Neil Stottlemyre Jr., the bullpen coach. And they'll get J.J. puts up and throwing. Jimmy Rollins. Phillies through the first six innings against Arroyo had only five hits. They have seven hits over the last two innings, including four here in the eighth. Diamondbacks were rolling along with a 5 nothing lead. Philadelphia, two in the seventh, now four in the eighth as J.J. Putz starts throwing the Sanderson Ford bullpen. 1-0 to Rollins. Called strike. It's even two and two. I would expect to see Revere on the move down there at first base. Leave Jimmy Rollins four pitches in the bat to pick one to hit. Now with two strikes, all bets are off. Feedback's thinking the same way. Trevor Cahill with a pickoff attempt over at first. It's full three and two. Revere takes off. Rollins strikes out, and they have Ashy at third, but he's back there in time. So Revere moves up. Rollins strikes out for the second out. And the ninth man in the inning, Chase Sutley, will hit for Second Philadelphia. Full arm fake to second base, hoping to draw Ashy down that third baseline and then throw behind him, but read that fake throw, got back to the bag on his belly. That's a strikeout and a stolen base. So Ashy at third, Revere at second. Utley one for four. Two and zero. Oh. Back to a couple of years ago. Super down and in. Well, Chase Utley's a good hitter anyway. They're going to go ahead and put him on base and take their chances with Ryan Howard. Chase Utley, I was about to say, a pretty good hitter under any circumstance, but like a lot of lefties, he likes that ball down and in where he can use that quick swing and just drop the head of the bat on the ball. The numbers favor the matchup for the Diamondbacks. And it's Ryan Howard who started the inning. He hit the pop up into the shift that Prado dropped off the glove for an error. And that's how he got started. It was 5 0 D backs.
Bases loaded, two outs. Howard 0 for 4. Twelve grand slams in his career for Ryan Howard. Not tonight. High in the air to left, but Cody Ross has room. And the Phillies leave them loaded, but they get four, and they take a 6-5 lead. Big 4-5-0 oh, out there to Billy. New pitcher for the Phillies is the left-hander Antonio Bastardo. He's out there now in the eighth inning with a one-run lead. And the ERA is a little uh, deceptive there for Bastardo. It's 4-3-5. He gave up three earned in uh, one inning of work in one game this year. But in nine of his ten appearances, he's worked to a 1-9-3. ERA. So if you throw out the one bad outing he's had, he's been very good as always. He'll work to Gerardo Parr to lead off the eighth. Diamondbacks had a 5 0 lead. Now they're playing catch up. So it's another at bat against a left hander for Gerardo Parr today. Para Owings and the pitcher spot, 7 8 9 in the Arizona 8th. We've talked about Para needing to improve against left hand pitching this year. He hit a buck 98 versus lefties last year. This year it's about 150. That's in the dirt, and Parr is ahead 2-0. Oh. Yeah, the Phillies have nobody warming behind Bestardo, at least not right now. He's one of those guys that gets uh, righties out as efficiently as lefties so far this season. Right-handers hitting only 154 against the Philly left-hander. You see in the right of your screen, Jonathan Papelbon doing something.
Fields up. He did not go, says Mark Wagner at third. So it's three balls and a strike. Mastorga doesn't give up a lot of base hits, but he will occasionally get wild like he has been here so far in this at bat by Gerardo Parra. Seven walks in ten and a third. And only allowed six base hits. Ball four, leadoff man aboard for the D-backs. That's the tying run. FoxSportsArizona.com has all the online local sports coverage you won't find anywhere else. Jack Schroeder writes about how the Diamondbacks will make up for the loss of Mark Trumbo. Plus post-game reaction from the clubhouse. And Tyler Lockman on Pat Tillman's enduring legacy. And Pat's run. All that more right now, Fox Sports Arizona. Com. So the tying run aboard for the D-backs in the game. Nobody out here is Chris Owings. Owings has singled and walked. He scored a run. And Bastardo can't find the play. Boy, and your approach against Bastardo should be exactly the opposite of what the Diamondbacks did early against Cliff Lee. Attacking first, second pitch in the sequence, knowing he was going to be around the plate. Now you've got a guy on the mound that is rarely around the plate. Be patient. Make sure you get a ball you want to hit. For a moment there in the background, the on deck hitter, that's Cliff Pennington. He would hit for the pitcher. And JJ puts his throwing in the Diamondback bullpen. There's Pennington. We got the start last night at shortstop. 1 0 to Owings. 2 0. So far for Antonio Bastardo, seven pitches, six balls. Good sweeping breaking ball trying to get. Bastardo back into the strike zone just misses off that inside corner. That's high in the air to right field. Marlon Bird calling for it. One away. So here's Pennington, the switch hitter. He'll bat from the right side against Bastardo. Number four, Cliff Pennington. Pennington hitting 308 over his last 11 games. He's up to 281 on the year. Pennington started at shortstop last night, went one for four with a single. There's a strike, 0 1. Following Pennington, the Diamondbacks have three right handers due up top of the order Pollock, Prado, and Paul Goldschmidt. Mike Adams, the right hander, is throwing in the Philadelphia bullpen. Oh, and two. <laughs> Called strike three. Two down in the eighth. Sets up on that inside corner. Bastardo hits the target. Just does nip the edge of the corner. Well, here's A.J. Pollock, who's had a great night so far. Remember, it was Pollock who provided the key insurance run last night with that solo homer with one out in the eighth. He's up with two down in the eighth, and this has been his day so far. He opened it up with a single first pitch from Cliff Lee, the ball game. He would later score. Then in the second, an RBI triple. And in his previous at bat in the seventh against Manship, this double. And now with a tying run on first and two down, the Phillies will talk it over. The left-hander Bastardo is out there. Ryan Sandberg has had the righty warming up, and he wants Mike Adams. 
So after the leadoff walk to Parra, Bastardo recovered, got a fly ball and a strikeout. And now Adams will come in to work to Pollock. Pitching change back after this. Run at first base and two outs, and he will face the new Phillies pitcher on for just the fourth time this year. It's the right-hander Mike Adams. Adams began the season on the DL, coming off right shoulder surgery, and he's on here to get a big out with two down in the eighth. The freaky thing about Mike Adams, he has been deadly on National League West opponents. I mean, uh, the lowest ERA of any pitcher in Major League Baseball history against the National League West, minimum of 110 innings pitched. Also the lowest opponent's batting average against the National League West with at least 391 at bats. What's he got against the NL West? Well, you remember he was part of that great setup core in San Diego when it was Adams and Gregerson for the Padres. He's been around a long time, a decade now. And it worked to A.J. Pollock. Corrado Parra, the runner at first, and two down. Pollock three for four. A single, a triple, and a double. There's a strike, 0 1. There is room in left center field for AJ. Then Revere in center is shaded just a tad over toward right. And all the Phillies outfielders playing extremely deep. That no doubles defense, trying to make sure that Parra cannot score from first base. The 0 1. Out of play quickly, Adams is ahead 0 and 2. Just needs the home run. After his home run last night, what's the difference? This is well hit to right center field. Ben Revere, Marlon Bird, it's Bird in front of the track, and it's allowed out number three. Pollock gave it a ride, but they strand the leadoff walk and still trail by one as we go to the ninth.
here is the AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag AZFanPhoto like Mariah did. Bravo Prado. And you'll get your chance to possibly have it shown on an upcoming game broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. Use the hashtag AZFanPhoto. Team Prado will lead off the bottom of the ninth for the Diamondbacks, we assume, against Jonathan Papelbon. Marlon Bird leads off the top of the ninth for the Phillies against the new pitcher. It's the right-hander, J.J. Putz. Bird walked and scored his last time up. He uh, also singled in the fourth. About to say big out to get here for J.J. to start this top half of the ninth. Marlon Bird in eight previous at-bats, five base hits, including three doubles against J.J. Oh, and two. Well, keep dotting the outside corner at the knees like that. Nobody's going to hit it. Second right to Aaron Hill. Out of way. Brings up Dominic Brown, who singled and scored his last time. It was a, a rough eighth inning for Trevor Cahill. As we look at J.J. Puts his numbers this year, a four and a half ERA, his 11th appearance. Trevor Cahill faced nine in that eighth inning, six reached. And here's Dominic Brown. in a right of base hit. So Dominic Brown, two for five. Catcher, Carlos Ruiz. Phillies have 13 hits. 11 of them are singles. The only two doubles turned in from the nine spot. Gwynn, the pinch hitter in the seventh. Ashy, the pinch hitter in the eighth. And this guy's been a pain in the neck all night long. He's been on base four times. Carlos Ruiz go to right field twice in this ball game, and with that big hole on the right side of the infield right now, with Goldie holding on Dominic Brown, Aaron Hill a couple steps toward the bag at second, big hole on that right side. One and one. turned into one of the key bats in this lineup. Phillies always used to have big right-hand power in there, in their order. And that's a fair ball. Power the backhander. Brown was off the pitch. He moves up to second. Used to be guys like Jason Wirth or Hunter Pence or Pat Burrell. 
But now they're very left-hand heavy. Third baseman, Freddie Galvis. Two down, Brown at second. Freddie Galvis, one for 29 on the year. Diamondbacks will look for the equalizer, provided they strand Brown at second. It'll be Prado, Goldie, and Montero, two, three, and four in the ninth. Closer is ready. Jonathan Papelbon. Phillies have had a lot of production tonight from the nine spot in their order. Cliff Lee singled in the third. Mentioned Gwynn, the pinch hit double in the seventh. Ashy, the two run pinch hit double in the eighth. Pitcher spot is due up next, and John Mayberry is in the on deck circle. Oh, and two to Galvis. One for 29 is a tough start. That's a real tough start. Anytime your batting average starts with a zero, you know you're having a rough start to a season. 0-34 coming into this at bat. You better play a whole lot of defense to hit 0-34. Another 0-2. Got him. So they strand Brown at second base, and we head to the bottom of the ninth. Prado, Goldie Montero down six to five. Got two in the seventh, and then in the eighth for Trevor Cahill. Bob, things got ugly. Yeah, started ugly with the error by Martin Prado on a windblown pop up out in shallow left field. Carlos Ruiz drives in a run with a base hit the opposite way. That ball actually hit the umpires that got by Goldie down into foul territory. This could not stop the bleeding. They hit some hard, they hit some soft, but even the softly hit balls found holes against Trevor Cahill in that eighth inning. 
And now they'll face the closer, Jonathan Papelbon, on for the 11th time this year. He has converted six of seven saves. 26th all-time in Major League history, 292 career saves. He is right behind Bruce Suter and Jason Isringhausen on the all-time list. He'll work to Martin Prado, Paul Goldschmidt, and Miguel Montero, two, three, and four in the Diamondback ninth. Prado, a pair of singles last night. He's 0 for 4 tonight. Little flare in the center, and it drops in. Well, the Diamondbacks got the leadoff man aboard in the eighth. The walk to power couldn't scratch the run across. And now the tying run is on here in the ninth against Papelbon. And here comes Goldie. Now first base Goldie is 0 for 2. He drove in the game's first run with a fly ball out in the first. Walked and scored in the third. He has just one home run in his last 70 plate appearances. In other words, he's due. It gets away from Ruiz. Prada will move into second, and he is in there. Time run in scoring position. That's a big 90 feet for the D-backs. Awkward slide into second base by Martin Prada. Really goes in late, misses the bag with the front leg, hits it hard with the back leg. That one just gets away from Carlos Ruiz, who pounced on it quickly. Boy, very awkward looking slide right there. They rule it a passed ball. Ryan Sandberg, the Phillies manager, is out. Speaking of second base umpire Chris Conroy. Larry Bow, the bench coach, is giving the sign. Yeah, thumbs up review. The question is, was the tag on Prado when he was off the bag? Once again, that awkward looking slide. Martin is all over the base right there, but tell definitively from that angle if the glove is touching the leg. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be... Uh... Well, if you're the Phillies and you can convince them to take a look at it, you still have their challenge, of course. In that sense, you don't have anything to lose. Might have gotten him right there. Really tough to tell. That's the second awkward slide into second base for Martin in the ball game tonight. I just hope he didn't hurt himself. They need to find clear and convincing evidence. That looks like Jimmy Rollins all, all he needed to see. Be the outside and then turn around and start walking back to his position. Lotto, for his part, at least appears to be uninjured standing at second base. So you have Chris Conroy, the second base umpire, and Bob Davidson, the first base umpire, and the crew chief on the headsets talking to. Baseball Advanced Media Command Center in New York. They have to see an angle that shows definitively that Prado was off the bag when the tag was applied. Definitive look. We've seen several replays already, and it's really hard to tell from any of the angles exactly when Prado was off the base and when the Utley had the tag on him. If you have to guess, 
I would guess that they got him, but you're not allowed to guess. And that's the tying run with nobody out, so obviously a critical call in the ball game. And they are going to take their time. The longer it takes, uh, the better it bodes for the D backs. Now remember, there are other umpires back at the command center in New York looking at all the angles that you've just seen here with us on Fox Sports Arizona. And the umpires on the field just waiting to be told what the ruling is. Now once again, just guessing, but uh, the, the fact that it's taken this long tells me that they haven't seen a definitive view. They're still searching, and if they haven't seen a definitive view to change the call, then uh, he should be safe. They will only reverse the call based on clear and convincing evidence. Headsets look like they're about to come on. A heads up play by Chase Utley just to keep the tag on Prado just in case. He is out. No. Race the leadoff single. So now there is one out and a 1 0 count to Paul Goldschmidt. Base is empty. Well, when you think about it, I mean, obviously, a very disappointing review that time for the Diamondbacks, but heads up defensive play by both Carlos Ruiz and Chase Utley. Ruiz to get to that ball quickly, unload a strong throw to second, and Utley to keep the tag on Prado just in case he did come off the bat. A ball and two strikes. So Prado out advancing two to four. And erases the leadoff single, and now it's one and two on Goldie. Two and two. The National League's hits leader. Two balls and two strikes. Got him. You see Ruiz slides inside to pitch us back toward the inside part of the plate, but Rudy apparently caught looking for something else on that two strike count. It's up to Miguel Montero. Maybe singled and scored in the first. He was given an intentional walk his last time up. He's one for three. First pitch swinging. In the air to left, Dominic Brown. And the Phillies down 5 0, come back and win the ball game 6 to 5. And sets up the rubber game of the three game series here tomorrow. The Diamondbacks' winning streak is stopped at three. Well, it was 5 0 at one point, but uh, some problems in the bullpen in a game that featured 23 hits. Unfortunately, the bullpen let Bronson Arroyo down tonight on the positive side. Really good to see Bronson string together six and a third strong innings in this game tonight. They're going to need him to eat up those kind of innings moving forward. Phillies take this one six to five. Diamondbacks live post game starts now, Jody.